Hello, and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 253. And uh, my name is Emily Rainbow Davis. And uh, today's blogcast is uh, about a little project, sort of, can we call it a project? Uh, a ritual, uh, an experience uh, of, of the past year. And uh, I'll tell you all about that when I read it to you. Um, I will, meanwhile, before we get to that, tell you the secret good news that I don't feel like I should print anywhere, but I can say, I think. I mean, no one's told me I can't say, but they're going to feature The Dragoning, which is my audio drama, which if you haven't heard it, please go check it out. Uh, They're going to feature it in a magazine. Uh, I mean, it's an online magazine, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it's a real magazine, too. I don't know. Anyway, it's called Podcast Magazine. And uh, they're featuring the Dragoning in June. So that's pretty cool. They asked me to send them the podcast art. So I did that. And uh, check your your issue of Podcast Magazine in June. Because that's where you're going to see something about the Dragoning. Mm. Uh, so that's exciting. And um, yeah. Things are moving along. Except mostly they're not. But, you know, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. You get a little surprise. And, um, yeah, so today's broadcast is called A Performance Once a Week, which is not a, a scintillating title. I know. I, I, I tried to find something that was really going to pop, but uh, I did not. In any case, here it is. A Performance Once a Week. It started when A texted me to tell me about the National Theater's production of Jane Eyre that was available on the internet for the week. LOL, I said. I'm in the middle of watching it right now. And we had this fun little text exchange about our favorite moments in the show. We decided to watch the next one together via text. And before we knew it, we had a tradition of watching some kind of performance once a week. It has been one of the few things I found genuinely sustaining in these COVID times. We've been pretty omnivorous in our viewing, and I feel as though I've actually had a bit of a survey course in the performing arts of the current moment. Or really, it's a course in the moment from the moment before this moment, because most of these works were recorded in the before times. Sometimes I weep just seeing an audience. The survey is, of course, limited by the kinds of companies that can afford to have their work well presented on video and then can afford the bandwidth to share them. The survey leans heavily on European dance and theater partly because of that, and of course on our taste. A small sampling of our list works by Crystal Pite, Christian Spuck, Akram Khan, Stopgap Dance, Spy Monkey, Worcester Group, National Theater, Told by an Idiot, Nederlands Dance Theatre, La Patine Libre, Monica Bill Barnes, Grey Eye Theatre, shows like Emilia, Aknaten, Titon et l'Aurore, The Plastic Bag Store, Richard II, twice, two different productions, What the Constitution Means to Me, Latin History for Morons, Theatre of Blood, Reviser, Death of a Salesman, Oedipussy, Birthday, Giselle, Coriolanus at the Stratford Festival, and reasons to be cheerful. I wanted to write about this because I'm really hoping I can continue this kind of omnivorous performing arts watching once the pandemic is over. I mean, part of the reason I have not seen these works before is that they are so expensive. I know they're worth the money when you're dying to see them. Like, you know you love their work and you'll spend $100 to go see them. But you have to, usually, If money isn't abundant, be judicious about what you see and you won't take risks when tickets are $100. In this digital world, with the barrier so low to entry, that is, mostly free, with the very occasional ticket price under $15, I'll see anything. And at home, I'm not even stuck wasting the evening if something sucks. One night, A and I watched about 10 minutes each of a random assortment of dances, puppet shows, and plays, because none of them were great. You can't just watch 10 minutes of something in a theater. Some 
Sometimes it's not just the ticket price you're out, it's the whole night. But digital performance allows for big risk-taking, and big risks sometimes mean big rewards. It's actually quite remarkable that I have become a fan of so many performers, choreographers, and theater makers this past year that I never even heard of before. In a moment where there are few performances happening. None of us know what's going to happen for the performing arts when this is all over, but I hope for two things in particular. One, that digital performance will continue to be available. It may seem counterproductive. Why would people pay to come to a show when they can watch it at home for free? But I think there's been quite a bit of evidence that digital performances actually encourage ticket sales for live shows. My own experience is that I would, for sure, pay money to see quite a few shows I watched online in person. Those are tickets I probably wouldn't have thought would be worth it before. Now, I'd be begging for them to take my money so I could sit in the actual room with those shows. When it's safe, of course. And when it is, I'm going to need an NYC presenter to pick up the slack and book Crystal Pite and Kid Pivot as soon as possible, please and thank you. The second thing I hope for is that we can somehow lower the ticket prices for everything. I would like to continue to see a show a week when this is over, but I would like to see those shows in person. And I would like to be as omnivorous as we've been able to be online. That's something I want for everyone. An omnivorous audience is an interesting audience. It's an audience that can cross-pollinate and make an exciting impact on artists. Affordable arts make for accessible arts, and this horrible pandemic time has opened my artistic mind to all sorts of work I never had access to before. It is a real gift to be able to go around the world through performance. I am lucky enough to live in a city where much of that sort of work comes to tour, but I rarely have gotten to see the kinds of variety that I've seen over the last year. I would like to see these things in person once a week for an actually affordable price, please. I know that no venue, presenter, or producing organization can afford to cut ticket prices at the moment. But I am dreaming of a reshuffling of everything where theater, dance, puppetry, opera, and beyond are as affordable as the digital world. Or maybe a Netflix for performance where I pay a monthly fee and get to see whatever I want. Some new way of doing things would be glorious because I have seen extraordinary new works this year and I want to keep doing it. Hopefully, performances will come back and A and I can see a show once a week in real life. No text messages required. Oh boy, there was a lot of French in that list. We saw stuff in a lot of languages, and for some reason I threw the French ones on there, and then I had to pronounce them. And I don't know that I did that correctly. I did study a wee little bit of French. (laughs) Just a tiny little bit. Enough to make me dangerous. (laughs) but uh, not enough to make me able to communicate or pronounce Aurora in French. I don't know. Anyway, apologies to my French listeners. Uh, I I will take corrections, absolutely, please, of of my uh, pronunciation of anything. uh, And I'm also not 100% sure on the pronunciation of. uh, But I feel like I heard it said that way, so... I'm going with it. Um, yeah, and I didn't even put on the list some of the, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff. I mean, we have we we're, we've been trying to keep a list of what we've seen just so we don't forget. And it is amazing how many things I forget to put on the list or have forgotten because we didn't start making the list until maybe halfway through, and it's we're not like diligent about it. Sometimes there's things on the list that I don't remember the name of, so I'll be like that piece with this thing and the other thing and the fish that comes down what's it called (laughs) anyway (laughs) we've seen some stuff um so yeah uh i hope there's more there continues to be stuff to see online and in real life please soon i hope 
Um, so, uh, the song here is going to be, I, I have been going back and forth like almost every day about what this song should be. My first thought uh, is what it is actually going to be, but then it wasn't going very well. So I moved to another one. I played them both this evening and, uh, and the original has one out. Mostly for uh, thematic purposes and because the next one will go well with the next week. So, so today's song is a uh, Patty Griffin song called Mad Mission. Um, thank you for listening to the blogcast. Really, I'm so glad to get to share this stuff with you. Uh, if you like the podcast, please tell someone about it. Like, subscribe, write reviews in all those places, any of those places. Um, and uh, if you'd like to support it with your dollars, there's pa- uh, Patreon, it's called. <laughs> it's like I've never said it before. Patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis is the place. Um, or Kofi or PayPal. Those are all very nice as well. I sweetly got like two bucks from a person I do not know about for the blog, not the, not the, the podcast. Uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, the other day, um, just, just, it's, it's so sweet and also confusing, but great. It's so great. I have $2 that I didn't have before, um, from a stranger. That's awesome. So this is the best tip jar. Uh, so yeah. So if you feel like doing any of those things, great. If not, also great. It's, I'm just glad to have you listening. I appreciate you being here. And so here, without further ado, is Patty Griffin's Mad Mission, which was weirdly hard to learn. You would not think for this fairly simple, folky song that it would be difficult but it was. Um, and I'm playing it on ukulele, and uh, I I decided that this was the right song for this because I feel like it's a little bit of a mad mission to uh, to expand out our performance viewing in quite this way. Uh, but I am signed up for it. Anyway, here is Mad Mission. <laughs> Drinking like the Irish, but we were drinking scotch. Bartender turned on a movie, everybody turned to watch. And every single eye was gleaming as we reached the final scene. Well, at least mine did. He's looking at you, kid. It's a mad mission under difficult conditions. Not everybody makes it to the loving cup. It's a mad mission, but I got the answer. Come hither, baby, but then he's hard work to win all. It says it don't mean a thing, but still somehow it does. He'd like you to join the club that likes to say there's no such thing as love. It's a mad mission under difficult conditions. Not everybody makes it to the loving cup. It's a mad mission. I got the ambition. Mad, mad mission. Everybody makes it to the loving cup. 